Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. In today's world, it's essential to speak the language of technology, but to some, even basic technology like email or the internet pose an enormous challenge. That's where the South Burlington-based Technology for Tomorrow comes in. The organization is helping Vermonters overcome the challenges of the digital divide through a unique educational approach. To find out more, I'm joined by Nirali Desai. Nirali is a 15-year-old student at South Burlington High School, and she is the regional president of Technology for Tomorrow. Also with us is Jay Hoffman. He's a technology education teacher at Tuttle Middle School in South Burlington. Oh, and by the way, he's the 2013 Vermont Teacher of the Year. It's great to have you both here. Thank you. Good to be yeah. here. Now, Nirali, how did Technology for Tomorrow get started? So three years ago, my brother participated in a leadership program, um, and it was an exchange for, uh, through Europe. And he recruited some friends when he got back and started a capstone project called Technology for Tomorrow. And it just evolved into this great idea of helping you know, seniors and people that aren't really comfortable with technology, all aspects of it, you know, email, um, using their tablet or using their new up-and-coming iPhone. And he um, really like saw the need of technology um, education in the community and he's helped reach, uh, meet it and now I'm helping spearhead the efforts in South Burlington. And so tell me a little bit about what Technology for Tomorrow is all about. So it's now registered as a 501c, um, 501c3 nonprofit, and it's really about empowering the youth to help seniors in our community. Um, I know that this program wouldn't be where it was today without our amazing volunteers and without the team that you know works endlessly behind the scenes trying to um, get these workshops into play. So we have two workshops per month and one is a community workshop that is open to anyone who wants to come. And another one is based in Allenwood to help the seniors there with um, whatever they need. And it's just also um, Alex, our executive director, will be talking about this, but we also offer a lot of um, free uh, consulting services mm -hmm. and that will be expanded upon so and I'm so really technology for that. tomorrow has a partner organization mm -hmm. as well and Jay that's where you come in you're the founder of I care Vermont tell us what that's all about yes actually co-founder uh, today we talk about collaborating in education on all levels and so this is is true to that form a collaboration between myself and Diana Burt a music instructor in Shelburne Community School her students fourth graders believe it or not <laughs> and my news team collaborated to develop an, an organization called I Care Vermont. The goal was to help seniors with limited mobility bridge the digital divide. So these students helped them cross that digital divide. Using tablets, uh, they could connect them with their loved ones and ultimately with the world. Well, it is a little daunting if you're someone over even <laughs> 40 years old to deal with some of the, the changes that have rapidly happened and it's very intimidating if you don't have someone who can show you the ropes. And that's correct and the key here is that this collaboration goes throughout the school and other communities. For example our social studies teacher uh, Gary Russell worked with his students in a service learning project. He would take some iPads into our local senior assisted living communities mm -hmm. and the kids would actually teach the seniors how to use these devices. So any of the students, and you know what's great about it, uh, Judy, is it's not age discriminative. Any age student can work with a senior and help them learn mm -hmm. these technologies. And so we hear a lot about the common core standards in education. Tell us how I care and technology for tomorrow help fill that standard. So common core in a nutshell, the 5,000 foot view <laughs> is this. Common core calls for students to be career and college ready. It calls for students to have demonstrated skills versus just skills up here able to put on a test. I care Vermont and technology for tomorrow are beautiful examples of demonstrated skills. And, and not only just demonstrated skills, but it gets at higher order skills. Common Core calls for intentionally developing in students higher order skills, well, such as teamwork, uh, critical thinking, information assessment, uh, things like global awareness, civic engagement, just to name a few. It goes mm -hmm. on and on. And so why is it important for you, Nirali, to, to take part in this program? Um, I think that it's really important, like as Mr. Hoffman said, to be meeting these Common Core standards that it is becoming a norm and expectation from everyone. And um, for me, you know, Technology for Tomorrow has become this great platform for me to be able to help the community and be able to um, empower youth to do it uh, while meeting these standards and being able to 
achieve more than I've ever imagined. And so what have you learned along the way? Along the way, I've learned um, a lot of things. I think the most important thing is that being an active community member is really important and I'm helping others become that and I'm really, really grateful to have this organization to help me through it. Is there something that's really surprised you? Um, yeah, um, the stories that you know I've experienced is a lot of people coming in with no you know, idea of what technology is or even what an iPhone is and two months later, um, someone coming back with an iPhone and getting re um, being ready to get a bunch of apps or, and apps are really helpful because there's an app for everything and you can really <laughs> tailor <laughs> it. You can really tailor it to the person. And I think that some stories like um, people thinking email is only for America or not being able to reach their child outside of the US just because calls are so expensive nowadays, you know, them finally being able to take the last step or bridging, you know, their disconnect is just beautiful, and I think I'm really proud to be a part of it. That's wonderful. Now, I guess, you know, it is a whole huge part of our society now. It's part of our general conversation, and, you know, that's how people communicate. You don't get phone calls anymore. Right. You get Facebook messages. And so that's got to be pretty daunting to somebody who doesn't even have a computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think... Uh, like the biggest step is, you know, coming to the workshop. And I think we do a really good job of presenting the workshops as a place for everybody, um, no matter what level they are. We get people that have been in like programming and like been using technology throughout the years. And we've gotten people that, you know, have just becoming to learn about it, to come to our workshops. And I think that's really exciting. I mean, it's, it's, daunting in one sense, but for them also, we see a high level of excitement. Right. <laughs> Imagine a 93-year-old senior seeing Harry Belafonte, her favorite performer, on a tablet, and she takes the tablet. I remember watching Nuncie, who inspired mm -hmm. us to, to actually create I Care Vermont, and she actually got her, she said, you know what I want for Christmas? An iPad. Well, she got that iPad, and when she opened the box, she said, what's this? <laughs> what's this? Yeah. But she was mesmerized and she loved, when she saw the first FaceTime, she was enamored. It was the most amazing thing for her. Well, I remember my mother first got online and was, she still Google is a new thing for her. You know, she was talking about when she was a child, her mother would sing these Italian opera songs and there was one mm -hmm. she'd sing every morning, but she couldn't remember the name of it. So I said, here, let's, let's see if we can find it. And we Googled one phrase and the song came up and my mother just, you know, burst into song and was singing it, and it just That's makes great. such a huge difference. That's great. Yeah. So where do you see these organizations going? Is this just in South Burlington? It, you know it is right now, right, Nirali? Mm -hmm. But honestly, vi we're visionaries. Nirali is, her team is, and we have an I Care Vermont. We really want to see an I Care New York, an I Care New Jersey, an I Care all across the United States and technology right. for tomorrow. We want to see yeah. that just like you guys are mm -hmm. doing here. And I think it's a great, you know, model program and it's just based in South Burlington right now. But, you know, we're really looking for expanding in different schools and different um, counties throughout Vermont. So I think. imagine all the students that can be involved right. across the mm -hmm. nation. There's there's plenty to be done in the United States. Yeah. And, and this gives just one more opportunity for students everywhere and parents and communities yeah. to be involved together. Well, there's a lot of energy and interest in the programs that we're talking about, and we want to take a moment to share a few pictures of some of the middle school students who are doing such a wonderful work. As you can see, there's no shortage of youthful enthusiasm, and we want to recognize and congratulate these students, as well as those who are not shown in the pictures for their great work. Well, joining us now is the new Executive Director of Technology for Tomorrow, Alex Tuck. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Tell, tell us how you got involved with this program. Well, I guess I've been with the program for about three months now. Um, about three months ago, I decided to step down as the executive director of another organization that I actually helped found, People Helping People Global. Mm -hmm. And um, it just so happened that T4T had this opening uh, and they really wanted to start expanding. So uh, they brought me in to help with that. And so uh, what do you hope to bring to the organization? Well, um, I hope that my nonprofit experience, um, management experience in Vermont can be helpful to the organization. And also, because I was involved with the startup, I hope that um, the experiences that I had there uh, will help Technology for Tomorrow go to the next level. And so what do you envision that as? Well, um, 
the board of directors brought me on to do two things, basically. Uh, the first thing is they wanted me to help expand the technology education programs that we have right now with these uh, students. So we're trying to work with other uh, school districts across the state and um, uh, different communities uh, to do that. Um, additionally, they want they wanted me to help um, with a nonprofit management um, initiative where basically we offer free business services to, um, to local nonprofits. And we have this huge base of, of wonderful uh, business people that are going to help us do that. And so um, it's interesting to think about that because it seems like everybody's got a website and you have to be on a website or at least accessible on the web. And so um, obviously maybe not a skill that a lot of these nonprofits have or they don't have the money to hire someone to do that. Sure, exactly. I mean, we're really trying to push um, different initiatives like uh, improving operation, business operations, um, website development, uh, accounting services. Uh, we have a base of a lot of different professionals that, um, that really want to offer their services and there are a lot of nonprofits that could benefit from that. Mm -hmm. And so Narali, what is it that you enjoy most, most about your involvement? Um, I think to see the direct impact on the community is really rewarding and I'm really grateful to see all these people you know, come to me and be able to learn something new and be able to better their lives. Um, and it's really great seeing the the impact it has on individuals. And I think while the community is benefiting, like I get to see um, stories along the way, like I said, and people coming back with iPhones and different tab tablets. And I think that's just been great for me. Mm -hmm. And so to follow that up, why did you take this path? I mean, what compelled you and your brother and other students to do this? Um, I think we really saw a need. And I think that, you know, technology is such an innate um, ability in teenagers and middle schoolers and I think that we were really able to um, to fine-tune our skills and be able to use it in a way that's helpful for others and I think when we first started we didn't really realize how big it was gonna get or how many how much great feedback we were gonna get but I think that finally um, seeing that it worked and that people were really eager to learn has really pushed us through and got us going yeah and so for Alex, for you, what does that mean as far as your work that you're doing? Well, I mean, it's just, it's amazing to watch these young adults, like, go into a room and then, um, you know, see, see all these folks that are in, uh, in this elder care population that are, some of them are wheelchair bound. And, you know, they just brighten up when they see these yeah. students. And, um, you know, just like the, the little things, like learning how to turn on a computer and, and seeing these images, it's just... It's, it's amazing to see. Um, and I just want to see that happen more across Vermont. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and, and just continue to improve the lives. I mean, it's not just, I mean, these students are getting something great out of this. Mm -hmm. and, and also these people that are coming to these workshops are also getting uh, you know, this technology education that they never had before. So. Yeah, and I also think that um, the youth are really, you know, compelled to this program and, you know, really like volunteering just because it, you know, it widens their community and it be, uh, becomes something you know greater than them that they're working towards in school i mean i know before i started this i'd be my close group of friends and my family that i was really you know helping and working with and i think that now my community has grown and um the students that want volunteer really enjoy the personal connections they've made and really you know value what they have well, I think that's really interesting because did you, did you realize before this and did your peers realize what a huge resource you are? Um, I, I mean, I think that it's something that p people didn't realize and I think that when people come on board, it's something that really surprises them and they're really eager to, you know, become a part of it and the team is really, really great and I think that the volunteers are the life and blood of this as they've, you know, been out there every month like helping whoever needs it and being able to, you know, really um, tailor their skills and their abilities to help the person they're working with. Yeah, it's interesting. You don't hear a lot about or as much as you did like in the 60s and 70s about volunteerism. It seems like the younger folks aren't that wired, but it sounds like all they really need is a good opportunity. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what t for t has the, um, is offering right now. Um, you know, it's such an easily scalable project, right? Um, you just need a high school or a middle school that's willing to offer a few computers. And, um, and I think the kids, they're, they're really excited about getting out there and, and um, you know, volunteering if they have the opportunity. So I think t for t if we can work with 
other uh, high schools to, to expand these programs to other areas in Vermont, I think um, it's a great opportunity for high schoolers to get involved. And how can people learn more about the program? Well, the best way to do it is um, <laughs> on our website. Uh, tech, uh, it's tech4tomorrow.org. That's tech, the number four, mm -hmm. tomorrow.org. Um, yeah, and, and people can get involved in a lot of different ways. Um, there's basically three, three different ways. One, you can attend one of our events, mm -hmm. right? Um, you can learn a little bit about technology, mm -hmm. learn how to um, use PowerPoint or, or something like that. Um, you can volunteer, and there's two different sets of volunteers. Um, there are volunteers uh, on the high school or middle school level. Mm -hmm. um, or if you're a local business person, you can help us um, offer our free nonprofit services. Um, or three, you can be a liaison. To other, organ, uh, to other communities, so um, if you know someone in the Colchester area that um, might help us uh, get involved uh, mm -hmm. with the school district, we can do that as well. Well, I want to thank so. you both for joining us today. It's a great program. Thank Sounds you. like you're having a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> that's our you. program for today. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888- ATF 3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.